Are they still drunk? Are they hungover? Sophie and Daniel, definitely not sober. You're listening to the Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. Hi everybody, welcome to episode 139 of a Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. My name's Daniel, this is Sophie. Say hello, Sophie. Hello, Sophie. Before we're going to go, go any further... <laughs> Before we go anywhere, should we thank our patrons? Yes, that's a good idea, Sophie. I'm so clever. <laughs> Uh, shout out to everybody who supports us on Patreon. We couldn't do it without you. It's Adria Bowman, Emma Rose Francis, Jared, Lucy Murray, Jay Powell, Diane Small, Chris Braithway, and Mike L. Cheers. We should cheers. We never cheers. Cheers, everybody. Oh, uh, well, it's, it's unsatisfying. Yeah, you can't. Not enough is said about the fact that you can't cheers unless you're drinking the same drink, really. No, you unless need... you're both drinking from a glass. No, no, no. I, I think, you know, if you both got a bottle, you're fine. Yeah, okay, but that's a glass. Okay. <laughs> but also I think can on can is, is still a satisfying feeling. Mm. The sound doesn't isn't always there, but I the think the sound is important to me personally. Sounds important to me. So So just uh off air just then. We were talking about uh, the band Goldie Looking Chain. Does anyone remember them? Was anyone born when they were out? <laughs> I was going to say, how young do you think the people who listen to our show are? But on TikTok, it's kids. For yeah. sure, our entire audience is kids. And we'll talk about that more in a bit. That's boring. Um, kids are boring? Yes, okay. No. Our the, fans are boring? Yeah. That's a, I get it. No, I, we'll talk about that after okay. this. I just want to finish this. Get section. on with the story. Jesus. So the band Goldie Looking Chain. You may remember them from Guns Don't Kill People. Rappers do. God, that is just so lame. And, uh, well, it was a joke. It's a comedy band. They I know. weren't serious about it. I think maybe I just didn't find it funny. It was like trying too hard to be funny. For me personally. Yeah, you were young though, and I know that you... I love comedy bands. But when you were young, mm. you didn't like crude humour. True. That's, so you didn't that, like... that is why I hate them. <laughs> so you didn't like certain stuff like Tenacious D. Mm. Right? See, we. I, I know you. I listen when you talk. Oh, that's so nice. Um. Anyway, Goldie Look and Chain. Goldie Look and Chain. They had a couple of songs. Mm-hmm. They had a hit or two. Yeah, they had a, they had a couple of. Something about your mum, one of them. Um. I don't know. No, they had your missus as a nutter, <laughs> and uh, they got. I think they got in trouble or pissed some people off or whatever because they opened some kind of football tournament. By playing it and dedicating it to Victoria Beckham, and David Beckham was in the audience. So. <laughs> I mean, that is just silly. Well, I guess they must have dedicated it to him. Yeah, yeah. About, yeah. about her. I anyway, think that would yeah. be funny. <clears throat> yeah, it's laugh. it's yeah, it's it's silly. But anyway, anyway, anyway. Twelve years ago, they played the local rock bar where I live, the Witchwood. Oh yeah, I've been there. And so been sick in there. Yeah, you have been sick. Not quite in there, but in the doorway of there. So just right where everybody needs to walk. Just right there. And it was so... I hate this phrase, but you know people say tactical chunder. Uh-huh. Awful, awful phrase. Awful, wanky student yeah. fucking you watch the in-between us too much phrase. Yes. But it was the best example of that I can think of. Because I didn't even... You would... You would immediately in front of me and i didn't see you do it i don't know how you did that it was like you kind of went it wasn't wasn't <laughs> and voluntary then, and then <laughs> carried on walking yeah that's the thing it was like a cat coughing up a furball it was just <laughs> like oh this is happening but and then he carried on walking it's yeah. like step over that <laughs> step over who someone's been sick here <laughs> like, was... oh my god <laughs> apparently i used to do that a lot as a like young kid as well like i would just like <laughs> i would just like wee on the floor and then just walk away. So different. Walk away and be like, "Oh my!" God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! No. You know, it's like it's like in The Sims when if you don't tell them to go to the toilet, they piss themselves, and then they get mad because there's a mess on the floor. Oh my god, I've never seen that, but that's kind of what it you. was like. That's you. Oh, I'd be like, "Oh my god!" That people would watch me do it and be like, "Who's done that?" And I'd be like, "God, I must be some other unruly child. <laughs> Definitely not me." <laughs> 
How old are you talking? Well, like two. Okay. Right. Well, I was young, but I think also maybe a little bit. It should have stopped earlier, but I found public toilets so disgusting that I refused to use them. Wow, even that young, like. Mm, yeah, that smelled so bad, and you're so close to the ground. Ooh. I guess you've got to sit down. That's mm. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't. I wouldn't like shit in a public toilet until I was older. Mm. Now I've shit in every toilet in the country. I think. Well. You just gotta go. You know. I bet you someone's tried to do that challenge. Every mm. like spoon or something like that. <laughs> I think people go and have a pint in every spoon. Yeah, which, but it, you know. That's a different. To what I'm saying. No, I, I know, but oh. I mean, like, I guess that's going to lead on to that anyway. I bet, I bet most of the people who've had a pint in every spoon have probably, because also the, the kind of person you're going to be if you're going to go. You know what I want to do is go <laughs> to every Weatherspoons in the country. You probably got IBS. You've probably, <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of person you are. Oh, that's what you'll get at the end of it. I don't know. So I was 17, not old enough to go and see Goldie looking Shane, <laughs> but we went anyway. And because it's a local bar, oh, I know. Because it's a local bar, I didn't have my ID, and I just said, "I don't have my ID," and the bouncer said, "What's your date of birth?" Because that's the, that's the the get out clause. The big test. What's your date of birth? <clears throat> Here's the proof. So I just said one year before my mm-hmm. date of birth, and then the bouncer went like, went like this, and then he looked at the other bouncer, and the other bouncer went, "Yeah." <laughs> It was very embarrassing. <laughs> and uh, and we went in. And the show was so weird. So um, fucking... It's not surprising. So for anyone who doesn't know Goldie Looking Chain, which is most people, I imagine, um, especially if you're not from the UK, there's no way any American knows who Goldie Looking Chain are. They... Americans don't know about Goldie Looking Chain. <laughs> if there's <laughs> one thing I know about Americans, it's that they don't know them. Their own cultures. Yeah. There's like 11 people in the band or something. And it's kind of like Slipknot. If Slipknot were Welsh rappers who make comedy rap. That's that's such a good description. And they were all pilled up and gurning to fuck. And then at one point, they like got off the stage into the crowd and started bringing the crowd onto the stage. (laughs) So like I was on stage at one point. Oh my God. I was 17. I was... I'm Are you 17? Right <laughs> I don't know what just happened. As my throat's hurting from uh, all of the yelling on this podcast that I do. Mm. Uh, I was uh, 17, having probably one of the first draft pints I've ever had because I've never fucking been in a pub and been wow. able to get served, right? So I was, I was drunk, like properly drunk for one of the first times. And on stage... Looking out like a small crowd, you know, 100 people in the room, whatever. And I was just like, this is a weird night. This is very weird. And I think there's pictures, but they're drunken pictures from iPhones from 12 years ago, so they're not great. You won't be able to tell that was you. No, no, you can't tell anything. It's like, oh, some blurs. Mm. Um, but blur weren't there. It was a godly looking chain. Oh, and <laughs> Right. Jesus. Fucking. How boring can one night be? Mm. Um, so yeah, it was mad, but at the time Maggot was still in the band. Oh, this is, I hate that name. (laughs) Right. So he went on Celebrity Big Brother. So people know him more than they know the rest of the band. Right. Right. Um, he's left now. He's not in the band anymore. The band still exists? Yes. Oh my God. So after the show finishes, the Witchwood is split out into two rooms. One's like a pub and the other is a rock venue. Mm Mm-hmm where there's a stage and they play like they have like a DJ in there, right? After the show finishes, we go through to the front pub bit and so do Goldie Looking Chain. And one of them goes and puts a load of Goldie Looking Chain on the jukebox. <laughs> pays to put Goldie Looking Chain on the jukebox and like stacks up like loads of their songs so they're playing all night. That's hilarious. And then they just go behind the bar and start pouring people pints. What? It was the weirdest night. So fucking weird. Oh, what were the bar staff doing? They, they, yeah. were, they were loving it. Oh. Yeah, it was just like, yeah, Goldie Look and Jane take over the Witchwood. That's so funny. Yeah, it was hilarious. But they would be Facebook Live in that if that happened today. Yeah, for sure. It would have been a different. It would have been a different atmosphere if yeah. social media was the way it is now. People None of will... it would have quite happened in the same way. I don't mm-hmm. think. And people will be arriving after that happened to check. Yeah, yeah, people be showing up, and also I wouldn't have got in because people would be different about IDing mm. people nowadays. 
Some things were just better back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day when we were younger. It go the maggot or Andrew Major. He was in Major. Celebrity Boot in two thousand and six. Um in twenty eighteen he became a financial consultant for Newport Firm UCF. Oh. For some reason when I read this like quickly I thought it was a football team and then because I didn't read it properly. And I was like, this is so strange. But now I'm thinking, why is this even on his Wikipedia? So some, you just got a job. Some you boring. just got a day job. The company arranges the company arranges up to ninety five percent of the value of the invoices of small and medium sized enterprises to be bought by third party finance. Oh houses. my god, this is so boring. The man was on Celebrity Big Brother. <laughs> I know, and that's his job now. What the fuck? Also, like he was only famous for just being like a drug head. Like there's no fucking it's not like that man was not employable. Especially with his reputation. Maybe he stopped now. Maybe he got in with a friend. He could be really intelligent. Or good at finance. Sophie, I've I've talked to the man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wasn't. but he was on drugs at the time. Yeah. Really good at finance. He was paying to put his own songs on the jukebox. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but he's paying three quid to listen to two Goldie Looking Chain songs. That could have been a good investment for their band's future. It was. People are still talking about it twenty years later. <laughs> yeah, just me. Yeah, I'm the one. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what they did, um, they had one or two hits in 2004 or something. But then when Brexit happened, they released a song that it was. The tune of Dry Your Eyes, Mate, by the huh. streets. But it was called Auf Wiedersehen, Mate. And uh, it was really fucking good. It was really funny. And go look that up. <clears throat> but then, yeah, don't know what happened to them after that because I didn't really keep keep track. I have a couple of Goldie Looking Chain shirts, you know. <laughs> a couple? That doesn't surprise me. You've got, like, so many shirts. Yeah, I have, like, probably three or 400 T-shirts. I love T-shirts. Me too, but I just don't have the space now. I don't have the space. I don't have anywhere to put the clothes. My mum's house doesn't have the space. I can't to... put them in your mum's house. That'd be so No, weird. no, all mine are in there. <laughs> she definitely won't allow it. I think she's binned a lot of it already. Slowly, every time I visit, there's yeah. slightly less. <laughs> she doesn't know where it's going. Oh. Smart. That's a smart move. No, I, I love it. I love t-shirts. I have all of them. I don't think you... I've ever thrown one away. Well. Why would I? When I was, I was just telling someone this story the other day. When I was 15, I bought a, <laughs> I bought a t-shirt. I think it was 20 quid. In I can't remember what the shop was called, but we used to go in there all the time when we were teenagers. We, you know, you'd like go into town. I don't know what it was like if you're in Liverpool, but we'd go into town, which was like a big deal because... Here you're much closer. I guess you weren't that close. To yeah, town. we used to get the train every weekend to town. Yeah, so you'd go into town and like spend the day there, and I would I, just go to the same shops every week, look in them, not not have any money, usually buy anything, not and then pick the same things up. Like I want to get this, and then twelve of us would go to a Starbucks. One person could afford to buy a drink, and then we'd all sit in there all day. That's how it usually went with us. Oh, we just used to sit on the floor outside. Yeah, you aren't the smartest. Us. We didn't like coffee. It's warm in there, though. Shelter. For some reason, I don't know if this was the same in Manchester City Centre, but in Liverpool, you there was... City? City C- Centre. I think it's because I slur... I don't slur a lot, but I, I'm i trying to enunciate for the podcast, and it's difficult because there's no always be... Right. So you can, I wouldn't so you're even, enunciating worse. I wouldn't have even said City Centre if I wasn't on city the podcast, centre. as I just said, in Manchester. I was trying to make it... More clear. In the, anyway. In the city centre. In the city centre of Manchester. Where there like, was like an area where all the alternative kids would hang out. Yeah, that's where yeah, I used this... to go. That's where I would go. <clears throat> yeah. Right. I didn't like it there. Mm. Why? Because You don't was... like anything. Because it was full of people who had things like signs saying free hugs. Yeah, we did have that, actually. 
Yeah, it was everyone there was obnoxious. And if you're listening and you were there in the Urbis days and you spent time on Urbis, I'm not sorry. You were a cunt back then. You're probably fine now, but you were a cunt back then. I don't think someone with three hook sign is maybe a bit attention seeking. Anyway. Okay. What were we talking about? There was this one shop we would oh, go yeah. in a lot. And you remember, of course you remember, I don't know why I say, do you remember? Do you remember, like, do you remember a few years ago? No. <laughs> I've blacked it out. There was a real, between like, all the early 2000s. I don't know why I'm struggling to speak so much. Jesus. We've got to start recording podcasts more regularly because I'm out of kilter. Off kilter. <clears throat> what, what was the shop you used to go in all the time? Can't remember what it was called. Okay. You remember the early 2000s? Yes. Funny slogan <laughs> t-shirts were just a huge deal. Yes, because I remember um, they were huge in like the goth scene anyway. Um, yeah, Affleck's Palace sold a thousand of them. Yeah, per week. Um, there was one that I seen on Twitter recently. It reminded me of, well, it was the same one I had when I was like 13. <laughs> it said, Barbie is a slut. So douchey, so, <laughs> so fucking edgy boy patter. Like it's. I mean, that's probably the, the, the coolest of the shirts that were there. But okay. anyway, and if I saw someone in that shirt now, I'd probably think it was cooler now than if I saw it then, because then there were so many of those shirts. Yeah. That's the thing. Is like, it was who can buy the edgiest thing? Who can? So you can make... have the weirdest slogan. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So, Go on. when I was 15, I also did that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, I bought a shirt. It was... It was yellow. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. <laughs> and it's it had at least three fonts. One of them was, like, embossed. <laughs> that's unnecessary. But not the whole sentence, just that's, some of it. That's awful. And it said... Remember my name, you'll be screaming it later. Oh, no, what? And it was yellow? It was yellow. And it was in different... In different fonts, different colour text, white, red, and black text. What? Uh, Can you... Uh, in what... So... With... Remember my name was embossed, and I mean, like, thick. <laughs> like, it stuck out. Like, like if you were blind, you would have known what it said from a train carriage away. <laughs> it was the most awful shirt. Also, I was 15. Also, I had a girlfriend. I don't know what I was doing. That's funny. Like, what was it? I, was, it did, I don't know. Did you think that you were like... Like, did you think that a lot of girls were into you or something? No, God, no. <laughs> I had no self-confidence. Oh, maybe you were just like doing that thing where people... What is it? Like, they... Do the opposite. Yeah, they act like they're confident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To try and get Fake confident. it till you make it. That's the one. Fake it till you... Make it I've scream. Made a girl scream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, that's so awful. So anyway, I don't remember why, but I, my mum was mad at me for something when I got home. For that shirt, probably. Wait, I think, I think I, maybe I would not told her I was going out. Mm, that would make him all mad. My phone had died and I, she couldn't get in touch with me or whatever and I was out for hours. I, I don't remember. Maybe she, she, she had asked me to do something at home and I'd just gone to town instead. I can't remember. She was mad at me. So she's yelling at me about something. And then she's like, did you, have you, where did you get the money or have you spent money? It's something where she's like, what did you buy? And I said, a t-shirt. And she said, what shirt? <laughs> and I said, just a shirt, why? <laughs> <clears throat> you know, she was about to wash it at some point. So she made me get the shirt out of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> this is the worst scenario i could ever imagine <laughs> i know she was it's, already mad at me it's like i'm yeah. already mid lecture when i have to get the shirt out of the bag she doesn't know yet what the shirt is she's already mad she's already fired she's, up. Oh, she's already mad and now she's already mad that you've bought, spent money on a shirt doesn't even matter what the shirt is yeah the shirt could have Imagine said i love my mom she'd be like what a waste of fucking money yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
If you loved your mum, you wouldn't have made me mad. If you loved your mum, you wouldn't have bought that shirt. <laughs> well, you really wouldn't have. So... If you loved yourself. <laughs> if you had any self-respect, Jesus oh. Christ. So... She says, and this is... I've not told this story to anyone before until just the other day when I told Abby. She said... Why would you... Why would you spend that money? I think without asking, maybe it was her money. Maybe she'd given me 20 quid to do something and I'd spend that money on that instead. Oh my God, no wonder she was mad. I can't remember. I don't know. I don't know. I just know she was really mad. Then she said, do you even know what that means? <laughs> so now oh. I have two avenues. There's a fork in the road. Morally, ethically, there's a fork in the road. Do I say no and look like a fucking loser nerd <laughs> and an idiot for buying a shirt? I don't understand the joke. Mm-hmm. Right? Why would I have done that? Like, oh, my friends laughed, so I bought it, you know. Or do I say yes? Yes, I do know what that means. And admit that you're a reprobate. Yeah. A sleaze. Mm. <laughs> so I go with that one. And I go, yeah. <laughs> and I not just I didn't just say, yeah, I do. I was arrogant about it. Like, yeah, hell yeah. Shut Fuck yeah, I know what it means. And it's true. Mom. <laughs> Yeah, mom. I know mom. what it means, mom. <laughs> so, uh, you know what, Sophie? I never wore the shirt. I never wore it one time. Because why would I? Not only not only is it a terrible shirt, but it was so ugly. It was the most hideous shirt. Why did you buy it? I don't know. I don't know. So, like, <laughs> do you still have it? <laughs> I, I don't know. That's why. That's why when I just said I've never thrown a shirt away. That's what I was just thinking is, do I still own that shirt? And I think no. But I do have one that has a blue bird. It kind of looks like the Twitter logo. Mm -hmm. And underneath underneath it says, watching. Like bird watching. But not like bird watching. Not like like ornithology. That's awful. Like watching birds. Like watching ladies walk by. Mm. That's so creepy. Because when I was 15... From my wardrobe choice, you would have thought I fucked. <laughs> <laughs> or at least that's what I hoped. Yeah, you definitely wouldn't have thought that. <laughs> I hope I get on the bus to school and people think I fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but then if I saw a kid in that one of those shirts now, I would fucking die. Like, that would be so funny. <laughs> so funny. So funny to see a kid in that shirt. But at the time... It was cool in your I life. was a virgin. <laughs> so. Oh, obvious. Of course. I mean, <laughs> oh. But have you ever in your life wanted people to think you fuck more than when you didn't fuck? That's the one time you really wish people thought you fucked when you're yes. a virgin. Like, mm. I mean, <clears throat> not the entire time you're a virgin, you know, not in like a weird way. But I no. mean, like, like right at the, right at the point where you're like, people are starting to lose their virginity. That's when you're like, oh, I hope people don't think I'm a virgin. Mm, I didn't have that problem. I wasn't now, interested. Right now, I thought right it, now. The idea of it's crude to me. <laughs> oh God, you're such a <laughs> fucking loser. Right now, I'm 29 years old. And if I was walking through the street and every single person who ever saw me thought, I bet that guy's a virgin, I wouldn't give a fuck. That would not affect my life in any capacity. But at 15, I was like, I need everyone to think I have sex. Sex and fucking all the time. Cool guy fucking. You might as well just started smoking cigarettes and <laughs> fucking shaving your head or something. Shaving the, the, yeah. the color of your hair right now, it reminds me of another shirt that I really wanted for years. It was it's different than the shirts we were talking about. Is this about. going to be a compliment? Uh, it's just you decide. Um <laughs> It's not, it's neither. Um, okay. It's from that same store that would sell those shirts. Right. And they always had this one. It wasn't a t-shirt. It was like an actual like button-up shirt. And it was bright orange. And it had like San Quentin prison on the back. 
Okay. And I think it also said psych ward. Yes, and I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm some so of them, so many people had those shirts. Some of them had like fake blood splatters on, and I wanted that shirt so bad. <laughs> but it was like thirty five pounds. I hope people see me on on the docks in Liverpool and think I just broke out of San Quentin. <laughs> prison. I just swam here from San Quentin. <laughs> I mean, the kinds of kids that used to hang out there definitely some of them would say stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I I got this shirt while I was doing time in San Quentin. Yeah, yeah. All oh, right. Why are you still wearing it? I just got out. Oh, you were wearing jeans at the time. None of it makes any goddamn sense. It doesn't. Yeah, they, that's really douchey. And the thing is... <clears throat> no, but it's so cool. <laughs> but the, the thing is that when we were teenagers and those things were... You thought they were cool. They weren't mass producing those shirts because of how many teenagers were buying them. It's because so many adults were buying those things. I know, that's so sad. Yeah, exactly. Think about that. That when you were like, wow, that would be so cool, some like 35-year-old man somewhere was buying that shirt. Yeah, everything that I have always thought was cool is something that loser old guys also <laughs> think is cool. 100%. That is you know like my is? entire personality. The only things you love are also loved and adored by anyone who enjoys Sons of Anarchy. <gasps> that's that's your your aesthetic, is yeah. someone who probably likes Sons of Anarchy. But and I've I'm, never I'm, been on a motorbike. And I'm the same. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. But you, like, you have all of the leathers and stuff, but you don't have the bike. <laughs> you have the helmet, but you don't. Oh my God, that is definitely a type of guy. Yeah. Oh, for sure. In fact, we've just, um, we're watching The Apprentice and we, it's so bad now, right? <clears throat> it's so formulaic and fake and everything. And I was saying to Aisha, like, it, it, was, it used to be such a different show when they first started it. So the only place you can watch it is if you buy it on iTunes. Oh, like the original? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. So I bought the series for eight ninety nine. No um, which to me is terrible. What is? But it's on Netflix, isn't it? No. The Apprentice. No. Oh. It's like a BBC show. So. Oh, like. Maybe the Donald Trump one's on. Every time I see anything on the telly, I just assume that Netflix is on. <laughs> I guess. I can't deal with how stupid you are. Um. Well, who watches normal telly? Uh, oh, maybe it's on iPlayer then. Yeah, but only like the current season and the last season. Wow, that's awful. Yeah, and it's like been running for 17 seasons. So oh. there's loads you can't watch. Anyway, sorry, irrelevant. One of the tasks in the first season was like, we're going to do an auction. You need to meet with celebrities and convince them to give you stuff to auction off for this charity. Okay. I think that will be fairly easy. It's an interesting task. One of the people one of the people they met was Michael Winner. Wait, that old guy? Yeah, the calm down, calm down here. It's only yeah, yeah. Guy. yeah. He was yeah. on what is it like insurance adverts? Yeah, but he was famous before that for what? He's an actor, I think. Oh, okay. Like a theatre actor, probably. I think yeah, that that yeah. sounds right. Yeah, like one of the old timey actors. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's what he did, but I don't know. Okay. Anyway, Michael Winner. He, like, it's because obviously we're talking about something that happened 17 years ago. He was just an old perv. Just very... Oh, for sure. Very, like, comfortable with being on camera, being pervy. Ugh. Like, the the <clears throat> the woman on the team, there's only one woman on, the, on that team, and she was, like, leading the talk with him. And the narrator had said, like... The, re- the narrator basically said, like, one thing that they know about Michael Winner is he fucking loves birds. So we're going to send the woman to speak to him. Uh. Like, pretty much that's what they said, right? Like, it's oh, it's known he's a bit of a Lothario or whatever, however they fucking worded it. <laughs> and he was just like, he was just very openly like, ooh, yeah, so the woman's just uh, talking to me. <laughs> like, what? This fucking, oh, my God. Weird old guy. As if anyway, it's still the 70s. Not the point of the story. Okay. Really? They went and talked to... Some guy, I didn't even recognize him, so he mustn't be famous anymore. But he, I guess, did gardening shows or Alan Titchmarsh. Grand design. No, but he, um, he did know because he met. They mentioned this. He knew Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen. 
Oh. So something in that remit, right? <clears throat> it wasn't Handy Andy, was it? No. He's I not a gardener. So. Tommy, the other fella? I don't think he was a gardener. Okay. Anyway, some guy, some fucking home improvement guy. Mm-hmm. It was it was Tim Allen. <laughs> and they went and talked to him, and they were trying to get whatever they could, like get, get the best deal. And they wanted his motorbike. They were like, oh, I know that you uh, have this this whatever bike. And in the end, he wouldn't give it them because he was like, I, I'd be worried that you couldn't make sure it was going to somebody who knew what they were doing with it. And it's a very powerful bike. Also, he'd had it three years. He doesn't know how to ride a motorbike. He's never been on it. He just owns it. Mm. <sighs> yeah, that's so sad. So yeah, that is a type of guy. Yeah. And that's the guy it is. Rich guy doesn't know what to do with his money, buys a motorbike, can't ride it. But he could easily learn so easily. Easily so easily. He could learn. This has just made me think of something else that I saw recently. I don't know why we're talking about like reality TV so much lately, but... I love reality TV. It's so good. Yeah, actually, that is probably the only thing I watch. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now that I think about it, yeah. Wait, oh, but it's like fifty percent of television at least. By the time this is out, the the series will the season will have ended. But uh, then you probably have heard them doing a TV show of the game, The Last of Us. Ah. Uh, and that is Aisha's favorite game. She loves it so much. She's been waiting for ages for this show to come out, and we are weeks behind because she keeps being like, "Let's watch more of The Apprentice." <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> what? What? She, she? She? She is not watching the show that's made about her favorite computer game of all time. Because she's so addicted. Because we're watching a sixteen-year-old season of The Apprentice wow. that I paid eight ninety-nine for. But I get it. Right? It's way better. You should have paid eight ninety-nine for the DVD box set, and you would have had it forever. <laughs> but because it's a reality TV show, they don't make a DVD box set of it. What? Exactly. So, oh my god. So you've got to pay eight ninety nine per season. That sucks. That yeah, sucks so it's bad. It's ridiculous. It's... And there's only, but there's only five seasons on Apple. So <laughs> then, where seasons six to fifteen are, I don't know. They just lost the masters for those seasons. <laughs> no, they're going to exist somewhere. No, do you know what? Oh my god, I, I, you have to say what you're going to say. But I read a thing the other day that, <clears throat> and I'm sure that most people who are fans of the show know this, but I don't know because I don't like Doctor Who, but the the original Doctor Who episodes are just like gone because... I heard about this, yeah. The BBC didn't have like a process of archiving things they, back then. They just used to tape over stuff. Because it was so early. And the reason I was reading about it is because... Of that woman who taped everything? No. No, but tell me about that after. The first ever episode of Doctor Who had to be delayed because JFK got shot. <gasps> oh my god. That was the end of that story. Uh, th- that doesn't mean that much to me as an English person. Well, I mean, it was in the 60s. Sorry, I was trying to type without looking. And I'm not it's just a long time that that show's existed, is all I'm saying. Oh, I see. So I've seen like a really a meme about this before several times, but I never knew more about the story until recently. Um, that this woman had been recording everything on the telly for like thirty years. <laughs> everything. What? Everything. Literally everything. <laughs> Wait, how do you record everything? So <clears throat> there was seventy-one thousand VH- VHS and Betamax cassettes in her collection. Um, there's no order apparently. <laughs> that's it. Because like, there's too many of them. Um, so yeah, th- because she's frantically switching tapes all the time. She's got to throw them over her shoulder while she puts the next one in, so she doesn't miss anything. So apparently, in the seventies, seventy-five, she got like a Betamax tape recorder and yeah. started started she filming was a beta like Beta Cook. Yeah, seventy-five. <laughs> started filming bits. You know, she was doing bits. Yeah, and then um. What I'm going to keep saying online things. So in 1980, CNN came out and it was like 24 hour news channel. Right. For the first, because before oh, that, it was yeah. like. <clears throat> TV ended at a certain time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you could only tape so much a day, I guess. Of course. But Seven hours of TV. Or she ended up getting like numerous tape players so she could tape every channel. 
so at first I just thought this was a crazy lady, but <laughs> okay. I think she's like um she was like a journalist or something. So it wasn't just like it wasn't just like because yeah, like you wouldn't have time to go back and watch it. No, it was for like preservation for like records. Oh, so she was just keeping the national archives before anybody thought to. Yeah, that's it's- fascinating. Sorry, I'm trying to like read while telling the story and scroll See, through this article that's not giving me like good information. I think there is something where like with those Doctor Who episodes that the BBC were able to kind of recover some of them from people who taped it at the time. Yes, yeah. Yeah, okay. She was like an activist and then she was hosting like a public affairs show at one point. Um, and then she just started like archiving like every telly channel. I don't. I, I, how did she have the money for all these blank tapes? I'm sure I read that she had to like use several apartments to hold all the tapes in. So she must have been rich. That doesn't make any goddamn sense. Like she was storing them in her other houses. That and she how could she not get anyone to like invest in that concept? Maybe they did. Maybe that's how she afforded <clears throat> to do it. Okay. Because I think I, That's a full-time I, I, job. I also read that she had people there to like change the tapes and stuff. Right, okay. Yeah, this has stopped being a woman. This is a library. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it was this woman who started it. Yeah. That's interesting though. Yeah. Did I have I mentioned that I'm hungover? Oh my god, no. You have not. I am. What did you do last night? Why wasn't I not invited? Uh, oh wait, yeah, I know. Alright, fucking hell, let me speak. I what? asked what you were doing, you went around, so I forgive you, don't worry. Oh my god, it's like it's like speaking to me. Shut up. Let me finish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't like a taste of your own medicine, do you? No. I want to be the centre of attention. The head honcho. The head honcho. The big cheese. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, no. No. I don't have to. You want to be the boss of the podcast? No, I want to be the centre of attention in all scenarios. It's okay. nothing to do with being in charge. Uh, Sorry. Rude. What, what were you saying? <clears throat> um, I went out for a drink with regular patron Jay. In Weatherspoons. In Weatherspoons. Very nice. Do you? You should have. Um, do people still do that? The table number thing. I was talking about that last night. I've not seen anyone do it for a very long time. I think it got old. Yeah, it's a shame. That was quite cool. I mean, we could do it again. Maybe one day. We should do it for the podcast. No, I meant for the podcast, not just a I, normal... Oh, I've done that on a normal night. Really? Yeah. God, you're such a loser. Do people buy you drinks? Yeah. Ah, oh, you're such a cunt. Nah, yeah, it's changed. It's no longer loser, now you're jealous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're making fun of me and now you're upset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do we... The, the most... I don't want to say successful, that sounds obnoxious, but the most, like, return on investment from that was... Uh, a night out that was just a regular night out, me, Aisha, and Vicky. And I just thought, like, maybe someone will buy us a round. And it was, like, two rounds show up, shots, Prosecco. That's incredible. <laughs> like a bottle of Prosecco. And I was like, this is already more than you can drink in a night. Yeah, that's crazy. I when... love that. <clears throat> yeah, it was great. Anyway. So I'm hungover. Mm-hmm. At what point did being hungover hurt your whole body? Because that started for me maybe two years ago. How old are you? 27? 29. Fuck. Yeah, so it starts around age 27. Right, thanks. I guess. That's that's why so many people kill themselves. Yes. (laughs) Oh my god! Turns out it was nothing to do with Courtney Love. He was just uh, aching. He's just so hungover. <laughs> he was so sore. It was just a rough night. I, I mean, I bet you it was. Um, for everyone else. Anyway, uh, that was weird. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just like I woke. <clears throat> here's the thing: I woke up at about five. I am. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. But I, I just mean, like, I opened my eyes, and I was like, oh, no. What if I don't get back to sleep again? But I did. Thank God for that. Like, cause for, it, for how long? Do you, don't you have to get up early? 
like seven. Oh. But if I open my eyes for more than two minutes, I'm awake. That's it. It's just so. You have to just. I looked. I had a. I had a Pepsi on the side, and for some reason, there's a pack of Coca Cola all in my room. And I think I bought a few years ago when I should have toothache. You can buy those. Yeah. Oh. That's why. That's why. Well, that's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can just buy it over the counter, and okay. they're like, "Have you taken this before? Do you know why are you taking this?" And you're just like, "Yep, it's for some real bad pain." And they're like, "Here you go. See you later." Um. Nice. And I was looking at this Pepsi and I was looking over at this Coca-Cola mall and I was thinking, man, if I just took one of those, went to sleep, I would have the best day when I woke up. But I didn't do it because that would be insane. Maybe you wouldn't have woken up in time. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> right. Well. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, but no, I, I, I didn't I didn't do that. But when I did wake up, eventually, I didn't feel as bad because I'd woken up at five and been able to get back to sleep. But... No, like, you know, I mean, a mild headache. I felt like, ah, I bet I could be sick now if I wanted to try, but I wasn't going to be. It wasn't like, oh my God, I'm going to be sick. And then I just started work and so I'm just sat in a chair working. Mm, That sounds awful And then, be hungover like that. Two or three hours later, I'm like, oh, let me go and do this, whatever. And I stood up and I was like, ah, my knees. My back, my shoulders. I'm so hungover right now. But that that is a new onset thing where my hangover is in my joints and my muscles. Like I used to wake up and be like dizzy, nauseous, headache, and I'd go, I'm hungover. That's a hangover. Now my body creaks and I'm like, I'm so hungover because my body is creaking around. <laughs> yeah, I've had it in like muscles. Like it feels like you've been working at your whole body out. Even if you've been drinking and not moving. Yes, that's exactly what it's like. It's like I've been at the gym. Yeah, I not have Not that. that I've ever been at the gym, but I imagine it feels like that. Yeah, in fact, if you've been the gym, you would feel way better than that. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, if, no, but... if you stop drinking and start going to the gym instead, you'll be healthier. Thank no, you, I meant like... I know, I got it. Actually, after you've been in the gym, okay, yeah, maybe you'd be achy, but it's a more satisfying ache than the hangover one. The hangover one is just, it's like your body's given up. One time I tweeted, I went through real phases on Twitter of humor style because Mm. I was like, I would, Trying out different material. Yeah, I would be like, oh, I like that. I should try and do that instead of just writing things I thought. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, I'll try and be like, that kind of funny. And, um, you know, the like, and I know you're going to know what I mean when I say this, and probably a lot of people listening won't because it's so niche. Yeah, it's such a niche area of the internet, and it's so douchey to even be talking about it. But, you know, the fave star crowd. Oh yeah. The used to a, pay. A lot of them were like, "I drink whiskey and fuck." Yes. And that was like their style of humor. Yes. <clears throat> For a while, I was like, "Well, that's doing good, so I'll just do that kind of thing." But I was like, a nineteen-year-old. Yeah, that you is know? funny. It wasn't like it. It didn't do well, especially because. Like, I'm English. You were making it up. It's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I tweeted once, you know. Oh, my God. This is so funny. What is it? It's not funny. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Get, bear in mind the T-shirt story I told, and I'm more embarrassed to say this. Okay. I tweeted, you know you've had good sex when you're aching in muscles you didn't know you had. Oh, that's so weird. And it's not even like a joke. Like, it's kind of true. Yeah, but it's more it's like. It's like a weird thing to tweet. But it's 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 like that edgy boy thing again. It's it's just like no the, one no one cares that you had sex. No, but there was like a circle of Twitter people who'd be like, "Oh, say ha, 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 very funny retweet, right?" But only if it was their friends that said it, probably. Well, yeah, if there was the fucking yeah, there was a there was a lot of clout. 
clicks. Mm, yeah. Cleeks. Um, yeah, I was never in any words witnessing. Yeah, exactly. See, this is I the witnessed thing. all of them this from the This is why outskirts. I kept trying other people's humor styles because I was like, I was like, oh, well, that, they all like, they all kind of help each other out. So if I can just get in there. It's like when I found out about, um, what did they call them? Like DM rooms or something. Oh, yeah. It was like basically like people were in group messages on Twitter. And it was like a big deal that people were in all these group messages together. And they would all like retweet each other's tweets. Yep. But I didn't even know they existed. That's how unpopular I was. Yep. Until people started talking about it later on. Yep. I certainly was never in any. Um. <laughs> it would be like being on someone's close friend's Instagram story, maybe. But it would be like you didn't even know that feature existed because no one put you on their close friends list. <laughs> This is a sad conversation. Um, it's not quite the same because on Twitter, or at least the way me and you use Twitter, it wasn't really for people that we knew in real life. So it's less sad. One hundred percent. Yeah. It wasn't like it wasn't like I was posting those things on Facebook. Yeah, it wasn't like trying to get your f- high school best friend to like something yeah. they never would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because in reality. You were just the person who was liking all of my tweets. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I said, you know, you've had good sex when you're aching in muscles. You didn't know you had. And my ex girlfriend, my girlfriend at the time, her brother, who didn't have Twitter, oh. but was just doing recon on me, oh. saw it oh. and showed his mum. Oh! That's so weird. So that was like a thing I lived through. Anyway. <laughs> That's, um, did she bring it up to you? Um, no, she brought it up to her. And then she was like, oh, oh my mum and my brother are like, are both saying like, you're probably not like good boyfriend material because you're saying things like this and whatever. And I was like, well, <laughs> I was like, well, eat a dick. They don't know about fave star. <laughs> <laughs> they're losers they don't pay eight nine like all this like people going on about like twitter blue like oh i fucking paying for twitter blue you're such a fucking loser people were paying to see who like their tweets the most people were paying yeah, to give sad. out imaginary trophies that's the whole thing on reddit isn't it reddit gold of course that mm. of course that's what that is i've never because to me because i don't use reddit much i'm like I've always just been like, that's insane that anyone would do that. But I and I never paid for Fave Star, but I I would it was less insane in mm. my mind. <laughs> He's laughing because I just retweeted that tweet. <laughs> also, I just pronounced it. Retweeters. <laughs> it's like people who say it's not on cocaine. <laughs> when are we gonna get matching tattoos? <laughs> how, how often? How often? Do, how often do people say cocaine to you? I don't know. I think I've seen someone say it like on the news or something. <laughs> <laughs> they were formal. Like, the formal use of the word three million cocaine. pounds street value of cocaine cocaine <laughs> <clears throat> it's like they're trying to pretend they don't know what it is by pronouncing it wrong I, I can't see now you're gonna get me in trouble with like other people like who i don't know wait oh you, you, i didn't <laughs> so she <laughs> so, <laughs> is it that funny <laughs> so she's replied saying have you told me about this tweet before and that's all i saw and i thought you were joking because i just said about it but now i've opened twitter i can see she's actually replied to her own reply which means that's not just going to be people who follow us both to see that everyone who follows you is now going to see <laughs> she's replied to her own reply <laughs> to the tweet which just says disgusting 
But that was like five what years was after, five years years after I posted it. I know what's going to have happened here. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I was just searching for your I think tweets I just about retweeted sex. it myself. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Well, you're such a loser. I know. I'm going to pay for Fave Star and give myself a trophy for it. <laughs> oh my god. This is the most sad, pathetic conversation we've had. Really? Yes, because. But it's the. It's funny, I think. But I. Yeah, but. I hope. It's weird to talk publicly and openly about that world that we were not in, but but we witnessed and thought we could be part of it someday. That was the thing, is we were behaving like someday we'll be part of this. <laughs> <laughs> we were not. People did not enjoy our tweets. I did. <clears throat> yes, so we fine. enjoyed each other's tweets. I enjoyed my own. But the thing is, that, that, was, that was the thing about it, is because of these fucking DM rooms, it didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't if matter. It, if... it didn't matter if it was a good joke or not. It just mattered whether you were in the well, crowd. Well, that's like anything. It's just a popularity contest. <clears throat> yes. That's what they'll the losers tell themselves, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Um. So anyway, this has been a weird episode. It's been episode one hundred and. 39 yeah, of the Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. If you want to support the show, it's patreon.com slash ahyddpod. And if you want to follow us everywhere, it's at ahyddpod. There are video versions of the show on YouTube. So if you're listening, you should go and fucking look at us with your eyes because we look great now. Jesus. YouTube.com slash at ahyddpod. I've got hiccups. <laughs> Have you anything more to say? No, that was enough. Okay, goodbye. Are they still drunk? Are they hungover? Sophie and Daniel, definitely not sober. Thank you for listening to the Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, no. No.